Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, Darius Nolan Charles, because today is the 15th of June 2023. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Um, look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. I'll disappear from that little left corner in there and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so uh, now then, also just before we jump in into the charts, just a quick uh, mentioning of our Easy Markets uh, website, which you can always uh, check out for more information about us. So guys, uh, let's jump in. Um, yeah, Nikkei 225. Uh, the first one I want to pick up here, and uh, you can see that, yes, we pushed higher, almost kind of came close to test to test that 34,000 mark, but um, uh, yeah, stalled somewhere near, let me just grab a line. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, I think it's going to be one of those videos where I'm going to be clearing my throat a lot. Um, but yeah, apologies straight away for that. <clears throat> okay so um yeah um we got a hold up here near the 33,850 territory so basically that barrier becomes for us an important one to watch because if we want to go further north a, a break of this barrier is needed then a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed and then we'll potentially more uh buyers could join in now in terms of the downside um <laughs> Uh, look, um, I still I will stick to my game plan. Basically, that uh, break of this um, upside line would be needed, and if we do get that, then yes, uh, we could uh, see a nice uh, corrective move here lower towards this upside line drawn from the low the fifteenth of March. Um, so for now, I think that as long as we remain here, look, it's. Although I'm leaning towards the upside a little bit further, but um, given that we already had a quite a kind of steep up, a steep up move in a short period of time, maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible at some point. So let's keep an eye on that one. ASX 200. So ASX 200. Today uh, we got some data. Uh, we got some employment numbers from Australia, so the participation rate improved the 60, from 66.7 from, uh, to 66.9. Unemployment rate improved, uh, going from falling from 3.7 to 3.6. <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, what else, what else, what else? Employment change, yes, also increased. Okay. In general, good positive numbers, uh, but uh, we are seeing a bit of negativity here. Now, look, the negativity that's kicking in here, I think, is mainly from um, from the yesterday's uh, Fed uh, decision and kind of the way that the end from the reaction that we got after. Um, for now, I would say this way. Look, we had our moment here. I mean, it didn't really do much. It didn't really react much to the today's data as well, so Australian data. So I'm just going to go from the technicals at this point. Because, look, if we start uh, falling somewhere back below the 7,131 territory, yes, I'll lean a little bit more towards the downside. And then I'll initially target this uh, highlighted zone right here. Uh, but if that gets cleared, uh, then yes, uh, further declines are possible. But let's not forget that we are still sitting inside a mm, falling channel pattern. So um that's what is kind of keeping us a little bit more towards the downside you know but if we of course if we if we start pushing back above the 7177 territory right here then yep uh, potentially more buyers could join in uh china 50 index uh, continues to drift nicely to the upside um so far so good the, from the technical perspective everything's working out nicely um we did uh yeah we did we're seeing some oh yeah well basically i'm repeating myself right now look with the china 50 index here is is this way that uh for me for now uh from the technical perspective it's working out nicely uh we pushed above this hurdle this to 12,600 what i said then i'm going to aim for the 50-day ema boom 
fantastic. Mission accomplished. What's next? Well, next is uh, the potential test of the 100-day uh, EMA. But for that, we need to see a stronger push above the 50-day EMA. We need to see a continuous uh, trade above the 50-day EMA. And then we could target that 100-day uh, EMA here shown as the green line. Because for, for now, the 50-day EMA is providing fantastic resistance. Uh, Nifty 50. Mm, Nifty 50. Uh, this one, okay. Uh, in general, what I said to you yesterday that I'm going to remain positive as long as we stay above this upside support line drawn from the uh from the low of the 29th of march so even if we do see a throwback here as long as we stay above the subside line i will go higher um if we start breaking it i will go a little bit to the downside not much but initially only aiming for this area between oh well not between, but actually around the 18,500 level. Uh, Winston76, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you too. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful start of Thursday. Um, actually, let me write good morning to everybody in the chat room. Good morning. There we go. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning, everyone, guys. Not only Winston, but Winston, thank you very much for being the first one. Uh, but everybody, good morning. I hope you're having, like I said, a wonderful start of Thursday because it, the market is a little bit tricky. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's the situation with Nifty 50. And by the way, um, uh, just a second. Somebody tried to go in and come in right now, but um, okay. So, uh, look, mm, for now, um, that's the situation with these um, kind of Asian and, and Australian uh, indices. I'm monitoring the US ones as well, with, together with the European ones, and uh, I'm kind of thinking that maybe that's where, you know, the uh, the reaction you know, could come in in Nikkei, for example, in ASX 200 and maybe even India's. But again, India and then China are a little bit different. So that's why uh, they, they do uh, move a little bit in more individually. Um, but anyway, um, look. Oh, and by the way, also, I'm going to be a little bit rushing through everything. Why? Because yesterday I didn't and I went, stepped a little bit over somebody else's time. So I need to finish this one within an hour. And uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. And uh, it's, it's apologies if there was going to be a little bit of, of uh, rush in my voice. Anyway, NASDAQ. Anyway, the Fed. Um, Daredevil Dave. Good morning. Just waiting for forks with my coffee. <laughs> Well, enjoy your coffee. Uh, I'm going to have coffee after this one. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to jump into the markets after this and I'm going to have some coffee later on. But uh, enjoy yours. Um, look, the Fed. Um, okay. No hikes, of course. Yeah, understandable. Um, looking at, let's have a look at the this one right now. Um, yep, uh, there is a, uh, I think, yeah, there is a, a rate hike, uh, the probability for a rate hike during the uh, July meeting, the end of July, uh, is great, greater than no no rate hike. Um, look, everybody's right now kind of talking about, oh, you know, why didn't they, they didn't raise rates and stuff like that. I think that the market in general, people are, are very difficult to be satisfied, right? I mean... If you do it this way, there you're gonna get criticism. If you do it that way, you're gonna get criticism. You know, so if they would have risen, you know, if they would ra raise the rates, then um, then people would say, oh, you know, you're, you know, blah blah blah. This the economy is not still well, and blah blah blah. And you know, like well, you're 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 gonna be the cause of of you know a market sell off or you know a, a catastrophe or something. A anyway, all the time, all the time, the same story. They didn't rate. They didn't raise rates, and now they're everybody's like, oh, you know, but why? If you think that if you think that still inflation is so high and like blah blah blah, so why didn't you go with the rate rate hike? So yeah, you you know, although I I don't really kind of I I I'm, I try to stay neutral in everything in, in this, but it seems like now it's like the you know you're somebody everybody's ga ganging up on the Fed and and kind of trying to beat it up. You know, of course it's not saint itself, but uh, you know it's still the, the the fact that how it looks from the side. I mean, is just uh, the human nature. I mean. But anyway, uh, looking from the market perspective, yesterday Nasdaq, um, yeah, went uh, higher, 
Um, it was, I think, the only one, right? Yeah. Ah, no, sorry. In the S&P, it was kind of in the positive territory, just like uh, by by, by 0 0.08. Uh, Nasdaq was uh, the better performer. It managed to recover everything what it started losing. And uh, yeah, it, by the end of the trading session, it closed nicely in positive territory. And uh, we remain above this highlighted zone of mine. I talked about this, guys. I mean, I said to you that if we clear this highlighted territory excuse me, uh, between the 14,642 and 725 levels, or basically if we do push above the 14,725 level, then yes, a uh, forthcoming higher high will be confirmed. And my next target will be this territory right right there uh, between the, or should I say, around the 15,260 mark. Um, look, this is a very important area of resistance for me. I'm looking at it. And then my question is, where are we going to go after that? So for now, I'm leaning towards the upside still. I'm going further north and I'm going to stick to that. And as, as long as we, yeah, as long as we stay above this highlighted territory, I am, I am um, aiming higher, even though we see a bit of a retracement of some sort here, but that's fine. That's, that's healthy. Um, but if we start falling below the highlighted territory right here, um, that's where I'm going to consider a larger correction to the downside towards this upside support line uh, taken from the low of the 13th of March. And then, yeah, we'll see if we can break it, you know, and then we, can we go a little bit lower. But at this point, look, I mean, everybody's right now uh, hoping to see some sort of a corrective move lower, which is fine, which is natural, logical, and uh, it's okay. I mean, that's that's fine. The only thing is that, of course, uh, when with every throwback, it's always the question like, oh, how big is going to be? Like, uh, will it be like a, a huge sell-off? Will it be not? You know, so... It, this this thing but that's why i look at the technicals of course i looked at the fundamentals but i look at the technicals just to see just to try to find extra um extra logic and everything uh, but um not always successful of course but hey uh that's the game we're playing here uh the s p 500 so also good push higher uh yes uh so basically we continue to trade above this highlighted territory i spoke about that that's the 4327 zone um and then we cleared the 4355 and i think now uh-huh okay this level no longer needed i think that it's time to get rid of it i think it's time to mm, mark this zone here the uh the high of yesterday or the current highest point of june or the current highest point of this year near the 4390 let's round it up here a little bit 95 um we're not far from that 4400 level as well the psychological one so if you're looking for some higher levels guys that's the uh, barrier that's the area that i'm watching and then i'm gonna aim for somewhere close to that 4509 um look there are ideas of aiming for the 4450 level um could be not bad but uh, let's put it this way if that's the case if we're aiming for something in between there then i'm gonna stick to the inside swing low of the 20th of april which is around the 4433 so a nice beautiful 4433 level this is going to be my target first um you know this arrow um look okay i'll put it the i'll put the arrow this way but um basically what i mean here is that i need i need a push above yesterday's high if we do push above that barrier the 4395 then yes i will aim for that 4433 level so that's going to be my my main target for now and then I will go from there. If we go further, great, 4,500 level, here we come, but uh, potentially. Uh, but then um, if, uh, yeah, if we do struggle with this barrier for now, the 4,395, then if we, let's say we break it, but we fail to stay above it, then there's no, it's no good. Um, it might still correct back down. But in general, with the, in terms of the downside correction, I would say, a break of the upside line uh, taken from the low of the 24th of May um, may attract a few more sellers in here. And uh, this could open the door toward that 50-day EMA or maybe, you know, further south. But this 50-day EMA is near my uh, medium term, or actually more of a short term one uh, still, short term upside support line drawn from the low of the 13th of March. Uh, could, could be a nice good target, but hey, let's wait and see. 
Uh, this whole area here could still be bullish because again, maybe we, we would get a correction here. Um, and as long as we stay above this highlighted zone, then there is still hope for the bulls to step in. Dow, um, Dow, yes, beautiful hold up here near this uh, barrier. Um, I talked about this. I've drawn this yesterday. Look, it's not ideal, but um, somehow, okay, it's doing the job. Maybe it's like a little bit biased because we're kind of skipping this peak um yeah it's look it's okay at the same time i like this downside line and i don't uh but okay it seems to be working so if you want to go higher a break of it is needed and also push above my highlighted territory here which is between the 34,269 and 363 levels approximately around there if we do clear it then yes i will get ex more excited with the upside with the downside um as i said before uh from the shorter term perspective actually so if we do drop below this territory uh below this uh, 33,000, um well nine eight hundred and ninety four i mean roughly this area basically and this area is between the three 33,800. You know what? Let's stick to the 850. 33,850. If we do fall back below it, um, yes, I'll aim for the uh, the 50 day EMA initially and, and maybe even the 100. We'll see. Uh, so that's my game plan for the downside. Uh, the German index, DAX. Okay, look, I spoke about this previously and uh, I said to you that I went a while ago when we were still in here in this, in this range. Um, I talked about this idea of maybe seeing a possible double top. But one thing I really want to do here is I want to get rid of all the drawings. I'm going to bring back some of them, but actually I want to have a fresh look uh, because I want to see what's happening here in relation to my EMAs. Well, um, after we reversed nicely to the upside here back in November 2022, we continue to rally and now we are near this key resistance barrier, the 16,374. So if you want to go higher, a break of that barrier is needed. And then, yes, we could go uh, further north into uncharted territory. Uh, for now, um, I would say mm, keep your eyes on this, guys. It's like I said, it's uh, quite an, an important barrier to watch. From the shorter term perspective, we can also keep an eye on this upside line right here. And uh, yeah, if we do uh, if we do break the little short term upside line here, then yes, I will consider some moves lower. Um, I do have this. I have drawn this level, this new one. I've uh, removed the the sixteen thousand and sixty three territory before, which we had before there. I removed it, and now I'm gonna keep an eye on kind of just in general the whole area here, and um, because there's a bunch of these levels that could in a way work out. So some basically, any yeah. Where's my highlighted territory? Where's my highlighted rectangle? Um, so I will keep an eye on this zone here. And uh, yeah, if we do want to go lower, a drop below this hurdle is needed. Um, what's going to happen then, or should I say what could happen then, is a move towards the 50-day EMA or maybe even the 100-day EMA. Um, the 100-day EMA conveniently approaches this level here, this 15,650 zone. Um, now, in general, I need to mark the whole zone because there is this, uh, this level here as well. And um, some of you might say, but hey, maybe this is a beautiful, beautiful head and shoulders pattern. Uh, sorry, not head and shoulders, a double top pattern starting, uh, you know, uh, with the neckline, uh, neckline being around here. Of course, yes, this in, in any way, if we do uh, break this territory, or this one that I'm highlighting right now, that, of course, may um, attract even more sellers into the game and we could then drift towards that 200-day EMA. But, of course, look, we don't want to miss out on this zone as well. So that's why I have my upside mm, line here drawn and uh, I have my hurdle, th this one right there. The area kind of uh, ar around um, the 16,111 and 113. Okay, that's uh, that's a lot here. I would say, look at the area in general, the 16,100 16, zone, for example. If we do drop below it, this may uh, attract more sellers into the game and we could see a drift towards the 50-day EMA. <clears throat>
And of course, the main uh, topic today, ECB. Today is ECB uh, turn to hit the spotlight. Uh, we do have uh, the interest rate decision today coming out. Look, unlike the Fed, these guys are planning to um, increase the rates. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's see how that's going to play out because, again, it's... Uh, Mm, it's really, really interesting because inflation right now is, is sitting at 6.10. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. So you, United States inflation is sitting around four and we have interest rates at 5.25. We uh, euro area inflation is sitting at 6.10. We have, an, we have interest rates currently at 3.75. So basically, I think that uh, the ECB has a bit of catching up to do. However, um, maybe it's not actually catching up. Maybe it's, you know, not to fall into like scrutiny as the Fed is falling. Maybe, you know, this is like it's a, a slower pace, but um, let's kind of let, let's say let's wait and see approach. So either way, mm, let's see how how it's going to play out. Of course, we're going to be keeping a close eye on the interest rate decision. But um, I think that the main um main thing uh where's that press conference there we go yep uh a half an hour later uh will be the press conference so check that out and uh that's when we could see maybe a bit of movement in the euro and the indices here maybe in DAC well hopefully uh in DAX here but um yeah, um, at the moment, from the technical perspective, uh, in order for me to go higher, I'm looking at this barrier right here, the 16,375. For the downside, I'm, I need to see a break of this upside line and a drop below this, this 16,100 territory, roughly around there. Uh, and then, yes, I'll go lower. Uh, the FTSE, boring. I don't know. I mean, that's just boring. That's just not interesting. So I'm just going to um, wait I'll wait for this one to do something. Um, look, in general, maybe some would say, but hey, Darius, no, that's wrong. It's not boring. It's it's exciting. Maybe it'll blow up, you know, uh, somewhere. Okay, yeah, fine. But at the moment, it's not really doing much. So if you want to wait, okay, perfect. Um, let's wait. It's not a problem. You know, we can pick it up, pick up on this one when uh, when we can when we'll start showing some some sort of life uh but to be honest for me as long as we stay in this uh, triangle i'm just yeah i'm just observing the price action um even yesterday's gdp numbers did not we're not able to kind of uh, do anything here on the footsie um you i'm talking about uk's gdp numbers so yeah we'll like i said today in terms of uk data uh we don't have much i think uh, no, we don't have anything actually. So um, yeah, so that's why I think that for now we'll 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 play the waiting game on this one. Uh, the dollar index, of course, of course, something that got affected yesterday. And uh, um, look, I talked about this, and I previously said to you that if we do fall below this territory right here, I will aim for the um, for the 100 and the 50 day EMAs tick and then if we that gets cleared i'll aim for the 102.84 territory right here tick maybe maybe the 102.59 territory as well but uh, i wasn't really sure about this one but tick um now what's next uh look okay um i think that uh, this hurdle this 108.84 i'll keep it this I will remove and mark the mm, yesterday's low here near the 102.24. Um, if we want to go lower, I would say a drop below this 102.84 territory is required. Uh, however, if somehow it continues to provide uh, support, maybe a drift back up could be possible. Look, in general, I am uh, carefully, if, if let's say, um, well, I'm always careful trying to be. But um, look, if the indices, for example, the U.S. indices will start, uh, well, it wouldn't start, but will continue uh, moving to the upside. Uh, well, we could see, still see a bit of declines here in the U.S. dollar. 
Um, however, of course, the the rhetoric that the Fed came out with saying that you know they 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 will continue with the rate hikes uh, just because uh, inflation is still not at their target. The target is, by the way, around two percent. Um, so that might keep you know the uh, the U.S. dollar from maybe falling off the cliff too much. So at the moment, I think that it's gonna gradually slide unless um, unless something else comes up here. But um, from the technical perspective, look, I think I'm going to take a simple approach here. And if we do fall and stay below the 102.84 territory right here, I will go lower. Um, my next target, this is the thing where my next target, hmm, I would like to see a test, a retest of this actually, but I, I think I would like to see this one more, uh, the 102 zone getting tested. But okay, let's, uh, I think let's do it this way. If we do drop and stay below this 108.84, I will go I'll go, I'll aim further south but with cautious cautiousness and uh, then yes I'll aim initially for the current lowest point of this week and maybe then the 102 zone itself we'll see but if we rebound from here mm, look in order to consider some higher levels on this one I think that a lot of criteria uh, criteria have to be met so Look, maybe a push back above the 100 EMA could do the trick. Um, I, I'm not really sure. And that's why for me, the upside scenario here is not very clear. And I'm not, I don't really like it. So I think that this highlighted zone, I'll get rid of it. I'll just keep the level. But um, in general, for now, like I said, with the upside, I will look, I'll take. I'll also take a simplistic approach. I'll, I'll wait for a push back above the 100 day EMA. And then, yes, I will target the 200-day EMA together with the short-term tentative downside resistance line drawn from the high of the 31st of May. A uh, gold, uh, gold took a hit. Um, and that's very interesting that um, the dollar declined, but then it kind of recovered. And that recovery it had its negative effect on gold and gold broke out through the lower side of this triangle and look i talked about this now my question is can we see a drop below that 1932 territory uh because look in general my target got reached because i said to you that if we do break the lower side of the triangle my next target is the 1932 zone well, uh, we got that move. Um, we got that. So tick, if you managed to capture that, congratulations. Now we need to stick to that 1932 level because if that gets cleared, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low. And uh, well, this could open the door towards that 200 day EMA because as you can see, previously it did act as a good area of support. So all those bulls out there uh, who are thinking maybe this is the good opportunity to step in, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that because, uh, look, if it does re re rebound strongly, then okay, that's fine. But the, but at the moment, the the probability, the likelihood is actually more towards the downside. If you haven't asked me from the technical perspective, then yes, uh, we have a since like after reversing lower in the beginning of May, we keep on forming these higher, oh, sorry, lower lows and lower highs. Um, yeah, that's why uh, be a little bit more careful with the, I'm talking about the bulls right now, be a little bit more careful with your ideas. Uh, unless we start pushing somehow back above the 100 day EMA, okay, I'll then I'll be very careful and I'll aim for the 50 day EMA. But if we clear that one, well, that's where the interest could come in, you know, interesting thing could come in. So, and then we could see a push back towards that 1985 territory somewhere around here or maybe towards aiming for that uh, psychological 2000 level but as you can see or as you can hear uh I, I there was a there were a lot of butts in this so you know uh we need to take all those into consider consideration and that's why for now i'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside and that's why maybe maybe just maybe us dollar here could rebound back up a little bit I'm not talking about much, but a little bit. Um, I'm not because of the gold drifting lower. No, on the contrary, if dollar decides to rebound, gold would it would be perfect here. The, the analysis would work out nicely, and then yes, we could see gold drifting nicely to the downside. Uh, silver broke the lower side of the rising channel, and to be honest, yes, uh, this one is. Uh, 
pointing more towards the downside. Look, my next target is the 23.25. I talked about it. And if that gets clear, then is the 200 day EMA. That's it. That's what I'm doing here. As long as we stay below the 100 day EMA, if we somehow drift back up, um, yeah, it's, um, I will have to reevaluate things. Um, for the upside, look, uh, for the upside, I think that maybe, just maybe, we could keep an eye on that uh, that 50-day EMA. If that we if we push back above it, then yes, I will uh, consider uh, some higher moves here. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I'm leaning towards the downside on silver as long as we stay below the 100-day EMA. Oil, uh, oil is um, yeah, it's on a roller coaster ride. Look, I'm gonna sit this one out as long as we remain below this downside line but above this uh, this uh, barrier this hurdle the 67 territory i'm just observing the price action i really i really don't like this area right here mm, it's not something that you know i'm i'm very excited about but if we do start clearing the 67 territory then yes i will consider a move further south uh, a push above the 70.13 level right here may attract more buyers but to be honest i think i need to redraw a few things okay i'm gonna keep the 71 territory for now but i think that Maybe it's the 70.49, so the 50 zone. Okay, the 70.50. If we do jump above that one, then yes, I will go higher. Uh, let me just uh, mark this one, I think. Yep, there we go. Uh, this is my upside scenario going to be from here. If we, yeah, if we do clear this down, downside line, then yes, I will uh keep an eye on that 70.50 territory um look the the downside line i said it before already uh that it's not something for you to stick around to because i'm just keeping it on my chart because look i have this sunday candle here and uh that's why i it might not be this downside line maybe it could be uh this or something like that so you know and uh that's why yeah it's for now i'm just looking at this one because it's steeper i want to see if it's going to carry any significance it if it will great uh we could go uh you know we we could go back down maybe if you know if it holds but if it breaks uh maybe you know this this could attract more buyers look it's it's very simple here i think at this point um not much to talk about and uh at the moment i'm watching these two barriers bitcoin of course Mm, decline uh looking from the, look i'm gonna just go from yes the dollar uh dollar had its move and uh i think that this could continue drifting lower but from the technical perspective it worked out perfectly i talked about this and i said that if we do fall below the 200 day ema um and we fall below that 25,250 territory then yes i'll go lower aiming for this upside line drawn from the low of the 30th of december 2022 that's my target for now period uh if we do climb back above the 200 day ema and stay above it uh maybe a bit of a retracement here back up here could be possible um but uh look um we do have this little trend line here uh maybe just maybe this could play out okay uh, it's it's a tentative one don't get me wrong because you can draw it this way um so yeah if you're look i'm my first step to the upside here will be from this 200 day if 200 day ema if we do climb back above it i'll consider a move potential move uh, back up but it might be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling uh dogecoin just a quick update testing the lower side of the falling channel which i've drawn yesterday for the first time here um so far so good uh, let's see if we can rebound from it um uh, yeah, at the moment, we're just hovering ab above it a little bit. If we do start breaking it, uh, well, guess what? Further declines are possible. And this is where uh, those bears could enjoy the moment. I think that uh, we could start aiming for something around here. This 0 0.0491 level marked by the lowest point of June of 2022. Look how far we have traveled, guys, to the downside um it, of course this is not something that those crypto enthusiasts like but um with the current ongoing sec attacks on um, crypto companies that's what you will get uh, this is what what's going to happen and you have to be uh either patient or and you know keep on holding um or just get out of it and maybe wait for better times uh, because at this point like i said i think the whole goal 
the whole point for right now is to cl clean up the market with um uh to clean up the market from different uh cryptos uh, different smaller ones you know and maybe just leave uh the top ones whoever the strongest one will survive you know wh whichever the strongest one will survive um yeah um uh, we'll see how everything ends but dogecoin um i think that uh this one either i don't know mr musk is gonna buy it out or something uh or whatever is gonna happen i don't know uh but um yeah i think that he's the only one who can keep this uh, maybe afloat let's wait and see uh AUD usd uh okay look i talked about this yesterday AUD usd so mm, looking at the picture here um i would say the highlighted territory is for now doing a good job it is providing resistance yes we are kind of stuck here in in this highlighted zone but we are still struggling with this 0.6818 level which is the, mm, the highest point of may uh we did clear it yesterday um, and this is what I said to you yesterday that look, we we will aim for this zone um, and we perfect. That's a perfect hit. Um, then I'm going to keep an eye on it because if somehow this continues to provide resistance, maybe a drift back down here could be possible. Maybe this arrow will start making sense. Um, but at this point, um, I, I would say, um, yes, we are near a, an important resistance barrier. If we clear it, this may open the door towards some higher levels. But I think that the bears might not give up that easily. And uh, we might see a, con a continuous hold up here. And then, you know, if that's the case, then maybe a bit of a retracement back down. And then we could see, you know, maybe a hold up near one of these EMAs, a rebound back up, and then we would clear that, you know, that barrier here and go higher. So at this point, I'm not going to be uh, ashamed to use my my Fibonacci's here, my favorite Fibonacci's. Um, so look, I'm going to draw it this way. If it clears the upper side here, okay, that's fine. It will if it'll go for a new uh high in for you know for june okay that's fine i'll have to redraw the fibonacci but at this point i am gonna stick to this and i'm gonna um, consider a possibility here where to maybe see a bit of a retracement look the 23.6 is coinciding well i would say almost coinciding nicely with the 200 ema so good potential target here um and uh yeah uh, and look in general we had a quite a decent up move here I'm not saying that, you know, uh, for sure this will correct back down. No, it's just that if we are near this key resistance barrier and we want to break it because we because if we break it, then this opens the door towards much higher levels. We could see, you know, move back to the uh, to the highest point of this year in a way uh, near the 0 0.7157. But look, um, for now, uh, if we want to go back there, I think maybe a bit of a, re a repositioning here would be needed. So maybe a bit of a retracement here would be needed. And then we could see a pushback up. But um, of course, if it starts falling below all the EMAs, scrap the whole upside idea, guys, and just start, we start, we'll start aiming lower. ADJPY, okay. Uh, so anything relating to the yen, if you're a short seller, uh, if you're just a seller, uh, I'm not feeling, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, it could be a little bit tricky right now. So, um, look, one-way traffic, that's something that, you know, every sh uh, intraday trader uh, hates and uh, because, again, doesn't, you know, doesn't correct back down or back up. Um, it just gets like a one-way traffic. And this is what you get with pairs like AUD, JPY, or in general, any other JPY pairs. Sometimes you get these one-way traffics and uh, USD JPY might be a little bit on a different side because US dollar is also seen as a as a kind of a safe haven. Um, and, and when the two safe havens, you know, collide uh you know you don't get much volatility unless there's like some sort of a, a big spike or something like that but when you when you're dealing with aud jpy's uh aud jpy nzd jpy uh gbp jpy euro jpy now th those tend to uh shoot up or 
fall off the cliff, you know, and uh, yeah. So at this point, we're looking at AUDJPY and we're seeing exactly what I'm saying. Um, where will it stop or will, where it could stop? Um, let me grab a few lines here. Let me recycle some of these. Always recycle, guys. Uh, yep. Uh, 96.57. That's what I'm going to keep an eye on here. Uh, this is going to be my barrier for now uh, from the very short term perspective. If we do get a hold up somewhere here, look, we could get a, uh, an overshoot. We could get like, a, a, you know, a, a false breakout or something like that. But it, And let's say if it does that and then it drifts back down by the end of the day. Well, uh, maybe just maybe we could see we could start drawing my favorite Fibonacci's and aim for that 23.6 retracement on the Fibonacci. But let's not rush into that. Uh, let's first determine where it's going to get a hold up. To be honest, I think that this week is just going to stay like that. Um, is just going to get remain elevated. Maybe going into next week, that's when we could see a bit of a, a more like a, a correction of some sort. Let's say if uh, this barrier continues to hold. Excuse me. Uh, and I'm talking about this barrier right, uh, right here. Uh, if it continues to somehow somehow to hold, then yes, uh, a bit of a retracement back down here could be possible. Uh, if we do clear it, okay, uh, then yes, of course, we'll continue targeting the upside, initially aiming for this 97.42 zone or the highest point of September. But I think that before aiming for the highest point of September of last year, I think a, a corrective move here is needed. So uh, let's say, um, like I said, that's why I'm keeping an eye on this hurdle first. I want to see maybe if, if we get a hold up here, uh, then we could retrace a little bit, uh, then find some support somewhere, not this specifically level, but you know, somewhere um, maybe around here or maybe around there. Look, there's a bunch of levels that I'm going to, later on, I'm going to shift into those, but um, uh, they're all kind of a little bit maybe on the tentative side, but hey, uh, we'll still examine those. But at this point, like I said, that's my game plan here for AUDJPY. Uh, NZDJPY, uh, okay, this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, first of all, let me remove everything. I'll look, I'm, I'm gonna bring back the uh, the some of these lines, uh, but I just want to have a broader like view here. Okay, so in general, you can see what's happening, right? We're in, in a kind of a range here. Um, so let me just see if this is overall, yes, we are in something of a range right here. Um, yeah, something like that. Mm, highlighted territory right here. That's what I'm going to do here. Um, and then let's say here. Okay. 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 Um, it's quite an interesting barrier where we are right now at. Um, let's see this. In this Let's mark the peak here. The highest point of April of 2022. Uh, 87.35. This is where we're currently stuck at. Um, you can see that back in the at the end of May it provided fantastic resistance. Today uh, we're seeing a, a violation of it, but we're drifting back below it. So the question is, can we get a hold up here? Um, if we can then maybe yes, then I'll consider a retracement. But if we cannot, uh, this is where we need to start aiming, uh, shifting our views towards the 87.88 level and maybe even the highest point of December of 2022 um, or the the highest point of 2022, by the way, uh, at near the 88.40 zone. Look, it's, we are at a very interesting spot. So like I said, don't rush into anything. If you're a buyer, um okay you can try to risk it and um, if you let's say like let's put it this way the ideal scenario here for further upside is is if, if you're already long here from somewhere like you you know lower um then you're holding then you can kind of try to gamble it maybe um you know see if it breaks or it stays or something like that but uh at this point if you're new and if you're you know you want to maybe capture here something I would need to see a, a correction, a correction first a little bit, then maybe uh, something like a, you know a further move north. So at this point, uh, I would say if you want to go further north, um, yes, a break of this barrier is needed. Uh, but uh, if you would ask me personally, I mean, I'm not really, you know, get, I wouldn't get excited, you know, by entering anything here. Yes, I, in general, I'm kind of 
leaning towards further upside, but the fact that it has a steep up move like that, this is what's tripping me because I don't want to get into something on a peak and then, um, you know, be sorry about it and or, you know, be re and regret it. So that's why I just want to eliminate these scenarios. Yes, it's a good move. Yes, it looks fantastic. Um, but I rather uh, consider the downside scenario here if we do continue to get a hold up uh, near this barrier. Um, of course, don't get me wrong. I mean, you, you still have to have your short, uh, your stop loss in place. Your, you know, only risk what you can afford to lose. And because in case this, let's say, does push, continues to push further north, it could easily take you out. So that's why at this point, I am just kind of, I like this pair, um, but I'm just looking at it. Um, now then, USDJPY, very quickly. So, beautiful move. Look, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I I, I, spec, I spoke about this uh, this week and I said that, look, we have a descending triangle, which according to all the tier rules tends to break to the downside. However, how many times I've seen this happening the opposite way? A lot. Uh, and that's why I said to you that we need to see a confirmation breakout. So we got that breakout. Then I said that if we continue to trade above this, yes, we yesterday we had a drift back down, but we failed to stay uh, below this uh, downside line, below the upper side of the uh, descending triangle, and we stayed above it. So, yep, that kind of uh, works well with my idea of, of aiming for that 140.93 territory, which we've managed to test perfectly, uh, and we managed to clear perfectly. So the question now is, can we go further north? At this point, I would say this way, as long as we stay above the 140.93, my next target is the 142.24. That's it. Uh, if we somehow drop back below this hurdle and stay below it, maybe we will consider this as a range with a false break breakout already here. But again, too early for that. Let's see uh, today how it's going to play out. Uh, USDCHF, just a quick update. Um, it's a roller coaster ride. Look, I, I said to you yesterday that if we do fall below the uh, 50 day EMA, my next target is the 0 0.8986. Boom, boom, tick, tick. Uh, I, I talked about this, uh, like I said, setup yesterday, and uh, and that's why you know, you know um, that's why I look at these daily charts because I kind of find this a little bit more clear or clearer. Uh, so now we rebounded kind of from this area here, and uh, yes, we overcame this 0 0.8986 a little bit with just like a false breakout, so that's fine. Uh, now what's next? Well, look. We are now drifting back above this 50-day EMA. So in a way, it seems that the market, the bulls are not really willing to give up. So if we continue to trade above that 50-day EMA, I am aiming for the 100-day EMA. Simple as that. I'm not going to try to invent here anything else. If we do fall below the 0 0.8986, then this, this is where I will get more excited with the downside. USD CAD. Uh, USD CAD. Um, oh, uh, okay. We stalled a little bit here. Uh, yeah, I think it's the chart is updating. Uh, perfect timing for uh, a sip of tea. <sighs> okay, it takes time. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, USD CAD. Uh, ah, let me uh, let the lines upload as well because I think that they're going to show up right now. But um, if you watched my uh, videos recently and the ones where I've covered USD CAD, you will probably know what I'm talking about. There, there we go. So this is what um, scared me like and worried me yesterday that, um, look, OK, we dropped below this, but then we also fell slightly below this highlighted territory, which is quite an important area of support. And then twice we created the false breakout here and uh, we pushed back up. So this is kind of leaning um, in a way kind of a little bit more towards the upside. And uh, I've talked about this this upside line as well. I said to you that if we do push back above it, I will start considering some higher levels. Look, if we continue to trade above it, yes, I will aim for the upside. My next target is the 1.3383 here, here or a, ideally the 200 day EMA. Um, if we somehow drift back below this subside line, um, yes, um, we could start looking at some lower levels, but I think this time I will be watching this 
highlight a territory instead. If we do clear it, then yes, I will get I will aim lower. I will aim for that 1.3262 territory or even below that. Uh let me just put this on the chart. There we go. These are the levels uh which, which I'm gonna be aiming for if we do drift below this highlighted territory. So far, we are above this upside line. If we continue to trade above it, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside. Jim PJPY rocket ship. Uh and uh yeah, uh look. What's next? Um, what's next? What's next? Well, basically, I have here. Um, I think we don't have much uh, data here. Only up until uh, 2018, or yeah, uh, yeah, something like 18 June. Um, okay. Mm, let me just have a look at GBP JPY T, uh, TVC or uh, no, this one. Nice. There we go. Let's. This one has a little bit more history. Um, okay. So I think for this one, I need to jump into a monthly chart. Um, right. You can see uh, this is the data. Yes, from uh, from Intercontinental Exchange. So um, look from around what 80s, 70s. Yeah. Um, look where we are. And uh, if we, I'm looking at the monthly chart. By the way. And in a way, we seem to be climbing back up. And if I go from my favorite uh, EMAs, we are crossing the, the 50 has crossed the 100 here on the monthly chart. So if it will go and cross the 200 day EMA, well, guess what? The pound could really get strong against the Japanese yen here. And we could maybe revisit these uh 200 levels i mean uh, i mean this is spectacular this this could be a historical moment but again uh although it sounds all nice and dandy but uh we have crossed the 100 day ema several times i mean i'm talking about the 50 here on the monthly chart the 50 day ema crossed the 100 day ema several times here on the monthly chart and uh, yes we did move higher but we failed to cross the 200 that's the problem now, however, if we do cross the 200-day EMA, if the 50, uh, if the 50 uh, day EMA crosses the 200-day EMA, now that's where um, it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more buyers. And then, yes, we could start considering that you know 200 uh, level or maybe even above that, maybe that 250, something like that. But 250 looks quite spectacular. But okay, look. Let's not rush into anything. Uh, let's go back to my GBP JPY here, um, and uh, I'll, I'll let's uh, like I said, let's keep it short and simple for now. Um, for now, um, yes, I am. I'm kind of leaning towards this 180 zone. I really like that uh, psychological 180 territory. Um, for now, I'm waiting for this one to give me like some sort of an indication of uh, where it's going to stop, where it's going to get held. And, um, you know, and then so that maybe I could consider a bit of a retracement back down. But the fact that if the indices continue to rally, then yes, uh, there is a problem for these sellers. Uh, because again, uh, everybody will be shifting out of uh, JP, JPY. Uh, but you just need to, to have the sentiment changed a little bit. And there we go. Then we could see a nice correction back down. So at this point, I think it's this way. Uh, let me redraw something. This um, upside line, I will do this one here. This is something that I'm going to be keeping a close eye on. Um, if we do break this upside line, yes, I will consider a move lower. Uh, that's where yet yeah, more sellers could join in. I'm keeping an eye on this uh, barrier right here, this 172.13. I really like it. Um, also, I'm keeping an eye on something around here. This is a very important area of, of support and resistance. Previously, this needs to go. I'm just tidying up my chart. Um, this arrow, I'll leave it for now, I'll recycle it. Um, and yes, like I said, I am currently waiting for this one to make some sort of a 
a hold up somewhere um, and then yes uh, we'll go from there basically at this point I would would I go further north yes I will uh, but uh, would I do anything about it probably not because the same story as with NZD JPY guys um, I rather wait maybe for some sort of a, a, a reversal here a correction indication for a possible reversal and then do something about it GBP USD um, yep we clear the downside line great so what's next to be honest, I'm going to go further north. And uh, another thing that I'm going to be watching is this barrier right here. The uh, highest point of May uh, near the 1.2680. If we do clear it, yes, I will go further north. Simple as that. Um, let me just put this on the chart. There's not much to talk about here on GBPUSD, but just to kind of monitor that situation here. And also, if you remember, I talked several times that whenever we break um, a trend line, an important trend line, we kind of revisit it from the other side, kind of give it a retest, and uh, then you know we push, let's say, further into the uh, uh, in the in the direction of a breakout. Uh, so yeah, at this point, like I said, we have a quite an important barrier. If we do clear it, uh, great, I will go uh, further north. Um, if we do dro start dropping back below this downside line, um, I'll consider a corrective move uh, lower. Uh, Euro CHF, just a quick update. Uh, beautiful false breakout. Look at this. Oh, wow. This is like quite good. This is quite strong. Now, that was a strong, strong false breakout. I mean, and now you're seeing that, yes, we're re re rebounding from this highlighted territory. And we, my next target right now is the 100-day EMA. If that gets cleared, then it's the 200-day EMA. If we fall back below the highlighted territory, which is roughly between the 0 0.97 and 60 uh one and 64 or in general you could just keep an eye on the 0 0.9760 territory if we fall back below it i will consider a correction here uh to the downside mm. and finally euro usd so yeah a uh, beautiful move uh my veg stopped working yes so <laughs> i could get rid of it in general i think i'm gonna what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna remove everything apart from the EMAs. So look, we cleared the 100 day EMA, we pushed higher, we cleared the 50 and we pushed higher and uh, we found some resistance actually nowhere, just somewhere around here, this 1.0864. Um, although I have a, a more interesting barrier around these two lines here. Um, but yeah, look, uh, this is gonna be my target for now. I'm gonna aim, aim for it as long as we continue to trade above the 50-day EMA. If we start sliding back down, no, I will start, I mean, I will start considering maybe a bit of a retracement here to the downside. And uh, I would need to say, I will keep an eye on this up, steep upside line. If we do fall below it, we could also fall below the 100-day EMA. And then, yes, we could start uh, shifting our attention towards the 200-day EMA. So I'm at, while we are near these EMAs, I'm going to stick to those. Uh, if we start pushing away from them, that's where I'm going to start picking up on some of these levels. Like, for example, this one, the 1.0864, uh, which is the yesterday's high and the current highest point of June. If we clear that one, then yes, more buyers could join in. So keep that in mind. But because the US dollar right now, oh, sorry, the US, yeah, the US dollar is right now kind of trying to climb back up. Maybe there could be some weakness in, in this. Let's wait and see. But these are my, like I said, my breakouts, uh, breakout territories. Uh, if we do get that, then yes, um, I will consider the next short-term directional move. Um, okay, guys, thank you very much for watching this. And thank you very much uh, for your comments, for your rockets, for your time in general. Thank you, guys. It really, really means a lot to me. So um, if you want to catch me tomorrow morning, as always, 6 o'clock GMT time. Uh, for now, have a beautiful, beautiful trading day. Stay safe. Have your stop losses in place. Risk only what you can afford to lose and everything will be fine. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Uh-oh, you just broke a digital image cursing us all to seven years of market volatility. Undo by subscribing to our channel.